So I was brought into the United States by not my biological parents. So honestly, I, I don't know if I was adopted, stolen, taken, given away. In my country, I hadn't gone to any kind of schooling. So when we got here, they find out that we are in trouble. So they, what they did is they put me in the school and um, I didn't know the ABCs. I didn't know the numbers. Besides that, I didn't speak English or Spanish. So I actually spoke a dialect. And what I was working here was actually to work. So then they started looking for a job for me. And I think it was like December, close to December, I want to say. And um, in school, they know something was not right. So I find out that they had opened up uh, a, a, a case for me. Was, You're 15 when they took you from the group. Yeah. Uh, I came to came there to take to to get tested to go, attend classes, but I failed in the English part. And then the social workers here at Kemmer referred you to Sister Grace. So I went, I think, like the, a whole summer to read. Then I came back again. Then I had to take the test again. And I finally passed it. I lived at St. Mary's. I moved in there. Um, and continued coming to Kemmer. And I was still getting tutoring, and then I had a part-time job. So then you graduated from Kenmare, right? That was in 2001, yes. in June of 2001. Mm -hmm. I graduated high school, mm -hmm. but I still couldn't go to college. I couldn't do none of that because I had no paper. So, so you got pregnant. Mm -hmm. I remember very clearly you, know, you walking through the door. Um, with him when you had him like you were just like holding him like super tight to your chest i had to i i had i had to do something because i had a child so when you were living at york street um you wanted to to go to college so you submitted the application um but it took i want to say like a year and a half maybe two years maybe longer you became and still are you know, a really strong advocate for yourself and for your, your family. So when you left St. Joseph's, you moved to Bayonne. Why did you make the decision? Because it's a it's a distance. You traveled when you had your, your other kids to bring them back to the nurturing place rather than put them in a center closer to home. For me, it was, well, it still is. But um, it's the only place that I trust with my children. Like, when him and I, we talk, he's like, Ma, you know, somebody's got to make it. As with Melissa and, and all of the, the families like her that we serve every year at York Street Project, our main goal, our, our main community goal is to break that cycle of intergenerational poverty. You know, and every family in every case is unique their needs are unique. And that is something that, that York Street excels at is recognizing the uniqueness in each of our families and you know, developing a, spe a plan specific for them. Being here helped me a lot. And, and I said to myself one day, I said, you know, I wish I can do something to help. Or um, even if it's with my story, it's like someone like to give back something, you know, for what I received or I lived there and there was support there and help maybe others that um, it's going to be okay, you know, even though you're alone and there's people that can help.